I'm Dennis Moreland with Dennis Moreland Tack, and today we're going to talk about changing a spur rail. And there's many reasons you might want to change it if you've got a pair of spurs that just aren't quite enough for your horse and you need a little rowel with a little more aggressive or if you've got too much of a rowel you may want to go to a duller rowel or if this hole is gone to wearing and you can move it back and forth you need to change the rowel before it gets too big when it gets too big the rowel actually goes to running sideways and it wears the inside of the shank out. And then we have to cut the shank off and put a whole new shank on. And had they changed the rowel on a regular basis, which can be six months or six years, depending on how long, how you ride. And and if your arena is real sandy and you spend a lot of time walking in the sand, the rowels will wear out quicker too. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take the rowel out, put a new rowel in, and you can do it at home with the tools you have or get to help you. Uh, sometimes I'm going to use power tools. You can use a file and... Uh, it works the same way, just takes a little longer. On the inside of the shank, there's a little head, and that was where the rivet was riveted down to hold the rail in. We're gonna grind this head off, trying not to get, grind any on the shank of the spur. Uh, we don't wanna scratch it up. I use a belt that is fairly fine. This one's nearly worn out. I don't want a real aggressive belt. You'll be into the spur shank in no time. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly where the center of that rivet is, so I try to get it in the light just right where I can see it and just put a dot with a magic with a sharpie and that helps you find the center. And you can do it over a hole. You want to have a hole that is just about the same size as the rivet head. And, but here you've got to hold the spur, hold your punch, and hold the hammer. And I don't have three hands. So I had this little deal made. And it's got a hole that's just the size of the rivet. I put this on top, put that. If you're doing it over just a hole, you need somebody to help you hold it. The thing lined up, and we're gonna tighten this down where it holds it real snug. You can also do, th this is a piece of one inch steel that I had built for this. You can do it over an anvil but you nearly always need somebody else to help you hold it. And be sure the hole is not too big. And first, I take a little center punch and just start the rivet out. And it, it moved about an eighth of an inch in there. Then I take a punch that is around shank the full length there. Okay, and take your spur out, and 
And there's the rivet we pulled out of it. Sometimes the intake in the mouth, the, and we've got a little bar on the inside. We've got to either take a little file or a little, uh, we can do it on the sanding belt just to get that bar out that happened when we drove the rivet out. Now we're going to install the rail into the new spur. And from the outside, put the rivet through the hole. And as you see, it sticks out. Oh, not quite quarter of an inch but I'm gonna take a little bit of that off and you can do it with a file or I just if I take a little off I don't have so much when I rivet it down This little piece is real important. It was a piece of aluminum yardstick. I thinned it a little down to the end and cut a slot in it. You don't have to have this. You can cut a little piece of light sheet metal and just something to stick in between the shank and the rail so that when you rivet it down, you won't lock the rail. And everybody that's ever put very many spur rails in has always locked it down and had to start over at step one. Put that little piece in. And for the first few licks, I use the flat side of a ball ping hammer. And then I'll use the ping part of the ball, the ball part. Trying not to hit the shank, just hitting the rivet. And flatten it down where the rivet is sealed in the hole. And when you go to pull this out, sometimes it's real tight. And I put it in a vise. just to hold it and pull it out and test your rail and it spins both directions and it's real important that you check it both directions now we're going to clean this head up where there's no sharp edges that you might catch your horse but uh, if you have a sander you can use that if you have a file you can do it with a file this is a fast cut rubberized wheel that's not as aggressive as a stone and uh, It appears to be that I've got it finished off good. I always feel of it with my thumb that there's no sharp edges. And depending on, if you ride in an arena with, that's real sandy and you walk in it a lot, your rowels are gonna wear out faster. And when this hole enlarges, you need to change the rowel before it wears on the inside of your shank and this is a fairly inexpensive job when you put a new shank on it can be over a hundred dollars just to fix a shank and this is something a lot of people can do at home or your horse sure can help you do it and all you buy is the rail and 
if you need me to, mail your spurs, and I'll be glad to put it in, and I'll send them back within a day or two after I get them with a new rail in them and finished and ready for another long ride. Thank you. I hope this helps. For more tips and to take a look at some of the country's finest handmade tack, log on to dmtac.com.